Now, Albury was, was the penultimate of the, uh, the Magnox tranche of reactors. It was built um, during the 60s. I mean, the construction started about 1961, I think, and the plant was commissioned about 1967, 1968. Um, it then ran um, through the subsequent decades and closed in 2012. It's, it's always a pleasure to come to Albury, I have to say. It, it, this, it, um, um, it's, it, I do enjoy coming back. Obviously, there's not so many people here now. There's an element of sadness, of course, because this plant was, was a, a sort of humming, thriving, um, um, living beast almost. And, and to see it shut down and, and in many in respects cold and, and, uh, and dark and, and no longer working, it's a little tinge of sadness, but recognition that these plants were never going to run forever. They've, they've done what they were built for and they've, they've done it very successfully. This was the, this was the hub. This was where um, everything was controlled from and uh, the, the, um, the sort of centre of the universe as far as the, the power station is concerned. All the sort of lots and lots of telephones you'll see particularly on the, on the centre desk there. Um, and before anything happened, anything was done out on the plant, before people did work, they, they would talk to the guys in here who were in control. I think hectic isn't a word I'd use. It was certainly that, that um, there was generally little more going on that, than, it is, than there is today, that's for sure. Um, the, the, um, there's lots of alarms that, that are, that are um, on the plant that, that um, generate little alarm signals up here and little lights go off and they flash and you hear some of those from time to time. There will be conversations going on between people. There will be a buzz about the place. Um, but we um, generally, these control rooms were pretty calm places. And even when things were going on, I think the, there was a philosophy to, that it, calm is good. Well, we're obviously inside the, the old repair station reactor block. And we're standing on top of one of the reactors on what we call the pile cap, um, which is essentially the, uh, the top of the main reactor core itself. Um, it's the area from which the, uh, the reactor is accessed to refuel and uh, around us we, we, can, we can see the, the, the big fueling gantries and the, and the fueling machinery which were, which were used to uh, routinely change the fuel. So this was, this was very much the, uh, um, the centre of the, um, the sort of reactor process, the, the, uh, the point at which all the heat's generated. And when this plant was operating it was it was just as clean. Um, these these um, reactors and, and nuclear power stations are essentially very clean places. Um, when it was operating, the, it would have been a little warmer, perhaps a little more background noise, but, but not so that we, we couldn't have, speak, have, have conducted a conversation as we are now. The, um, if the, um, if refueling was going on, then this machinery would be moving um, it is very heavy and, and uh, creaked and groaned a bit when it moved, as, as people will remember. There generally weren't a lot of people involved in operations on nuclear plants. This plant um, was late in the sort of Magnox program in, in its design and the, it worked after, after a few initial um, um, sort of commissioning um, issues that needed to be dealt with, it worked very reliably and, and it generated electricity day in, day out for just for months and months at a time. Well we're now, we're now in the main turbine hall and you can see there are two turbines here, one this end, one that end, and each of those was connected to one of the reactors. Um, they're a, they're a multi-cylinder turbine um, and on the end of which is the, the um, electrical generator. Um, there's lots of lots and lots of equipment in the basement here, or feed heaters and steam pipe work and water pipe work and electric pumps and oil systems and, and all of the, the complex array of, of equipment that's needed to support these, um, these turbo generators. They rotated at, at 1,500 RPM, they're 1,500 RPM machines. In its heyday, when this plant was operating, this, this room would be noisier. Be, they, you wouldn't be able to have the conversation we're having now, quite a lot of noise. Um, the, uh, it will be hot, they were very warm plants, and, and uh, um, they, uh, particularly in summer, the buildings did get very warm. Um, it does look much as it did 
um, when it was operating. You can see some of the paintwork is starting to peel a little bit um, on, on, on the colder materials. It looked much smarter than this when, when it was generating. This is it essentially, the, uh, the turbine halls, turbine hall and, and uh, this, was, this was an impressive place to be because you, had, you, you could imagine the amount of machinery that's going around in here, the noise, the sort of the, the, um, the feeling of, of, um, of, of industry going on in here was, was just uh, was impressive. Well, at the present time, it's, it's beginning the decommissioning process and uh, the, uh, the first thing to, to do with a plant like this is to remove all the fuel and that's been satisfactorily completed. And you remove all of the, the um, sort of fluids and, and, and things that you no longer need, all the, the carbon dioxide supplies, all of the, the oils, all of the, the, um, the other chemicals that you routinely had on site to, to make the plant work. Um, those have all gone and, uh, and then you slowly but surely just take all the equipment out of service as you can um, and recognising that the reactors themselves of course, although they haven't got any fuel in, still generate a little residual heat. They call it decay heat and, and they will continue to do so for some long time. In the longer term, you, you can expect with a plant like this for the buildings that are no longer needed to be emptied for all of the um, um, insulation material, asbestos material where it's present, and that's, that has been present on many of these reactors, um, to be removed properly, carefully, um, and then, the, plants, and then the, the plant removed and then the buildings to be knocked down, progressing slowly but surely towards a point where the only remaining pieces are the two reactor um, cores themselves inside their concrete blocks. Quite what that'll look like for this site um, I'm, I'm not sure right now, um, but essentially that's, that's the sort of um, end point you reach for now. And then the, the, um, the decommissioning philosophy in this country is to, is to then leave those in a secure state, sealed up secure state, for some more decades until it makes sense to dismantle them and remove the graphite and the, the um, other um, highly contaminated material from within them. So it's a progressive process which, which slowly but surely goes from what you see today with fewer and fewer buildings on the site to something that, that eventually will end up as, as clear land. And up the road from here is, a, is another plant, Barclay, which is one of the first of the Magnox plants. And you can see there a sort of um, a shot of what it would look like um, in that Barclay is now down to two reactor buildings and not much else. Um, and uh, that process is, is many years further down the track. So it's a slow process, it's a careful process, um, but it, is, it does take some time.